In today's video, I'm going to join the crowds, watch Nature's Broadway show, and get a bonus second show a week later. This is the Yosemite Far Fall. Hi, my name is Peng. I'm a photographer and I'm a travel addict. And I finally gave up and went to see the firefall at Yosemite National Park this year. Completely by coincidence, I watched the firefall again from a different vantage point a week later. In today's video, I'll tell you what it was like and share some tips with you on what I would do if I ever decide to go watch it again. If you don't know what the firefall is, here's a brief history. Between 1872 to 1968, with the exception of a few breaks in between, the Glacier Point Hotel would light a bonfire at night and push the burning embers over the cliff edge, thus creating a literal firefall. Yeah, it was a different time. But this practice was banned in 1968, until in the early 70s when photographer Galen Rao noticed and took the first natural firefall photo. And that's the firefall that everyone flocks to go see today. There is a very good write-up of the history at YosemiteFirefall.com if you want to read more about it. So what is this natural firefall? Basically every year in February, the sun is lined up with the valley just right to shine brilliantly on Horsetail Fall for a few minutes right before sunset, making it look like the waterfall is on fire. Of course, there are a lot of conditions that has to be met for this to happen and I'll cover that later. Although firefall is not a new phenomenon or new discovery, in recent years it has really blown up due to social media. And that's why for years I've resisted making the trip because of the horror stories I've heard. Uh, hordes of people destroying vegetations and riverbanks, toilet paper and trash everywhere. To deal with all that for just a few photos that look almost identical to what thousands of other photographers have already taken, um, it was just not for me. Fortunately, in the last few years, Yosemite began regulating the firefall event, limiting visitor numbers with a reservation system and uh, limiting where you can go. This year, my father happens to be in town and he wanted to see it. So I finally relented and took him two weekends ago. And I have to say, it ended up much better than I expected. So how do you see firefall? Well, first, you need to go at the right time. It's different every year, but the best time is usually the last two weeks of February. Secondly, you also need to have good weather conditions. Clear sky, of course, is a must, but not where you think. Horsetail Fall only lights up at sunset when the sun is very low to the ground, so you need the west side to be cloud free. That's why if you happen to go on a day with some clouds overhead, don't give up hope. There's still a chance you may see it. Wind is also important. Too little wind and the waterfall will be too thin to see. Too much wind and the water will be blown into a mist. So this is going to depend on your luck a little bit. Of course, you also need water. Horsetail Falls is seasonal. I've backpacked to El Cap before and I can tell you the creek that feeds into Horsetail Fall is tiny and dries up very early in the season. So we were very lucky this year because uh, there have been a lot of snowfall so far. If you go on a drought year, you may have a harder time seeing it. Finally, you need to make sure you can get into the park. The following information I'm about to give you is still accurate as of 2023, but Yosemite can change rules from year to year. For example, they closed access to Four Mile Trail this year completely, so be sure to check the National Park official website for the most up-to-date info. As of 2023, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, you'll need to get a $2 entry permit on reservation.gov to get into the park. The entire reservation usually opens early to mid-January each year at 8 a.m. Pacific time. This year, it was January 13th, but it changes. So by December, you should check the opening date and put it on your calendar so you don't miss it. Because once it goes live, the ticket on those desirable days will be gone very quickly. If you did miss the window, they open up another batch of tickets two days before the entry date. Once again at 8 a.m. Pacific time, so you'll still get another chance. That's how I got mine this year. The permit is good for one vehicle, so if you have a minivan full of people, they're all covered. It's also good for seven days, meaning 
If you got a Friday entry permit, you can go in any day between Friday and next Thursday. They'll give you a sticker to put on your windshield with a permit expiration date. I also want to point out that if you have a campground or hotel reservation within the park, you do not need this permit. Your hotel reservation will get you into the park. So if you have a reservation, please don't fight for this permit and give someone else a chance. But what if you miss your opportunities and couldn't get a permit? Well, here are some things you can do. Number one is go on a weekday. Permit is only required on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays so far. Although, after what I saw this past Monday, they might tweak it, they might change it a little bit in the future. I'll explain later. Two is to get a campground or lodging reservation. Like I said earlier, they're not subject to the day entry permit requirements. And if you can find a last minute hotel, you can still get in. I actually think it's better because weather is unpredictable. So if you're staying for multiple days, that will increase your chance of seeing firefall. Just remember, you have to be staying within the park for this to work. And lodging in Yosemite is usually pretty expensive. If you're up for winter camping, you can also do that as a more economic alternative. When we walked by Camp 4 that weekend, there were plenty of campers, but also plenty of open sites. So how do you reach the viewing area? Well, for better or worse, the viewing area is now highly regulated. I think the easiest way is for me to show you this on the computer on the map. If you're not familiar with Yosemite Valley, this is El Cap. This is Horsetail Fall or Firefall. This is the El Cap crossover. From El Cap crossover all the way to Swinging Bridge parking here, this entire area along Southside Drive is now off limit. So your viewing area is really limited to Northside Drive. You can no longer stop, park, drop off anyone, or even walk into this area. This is obviously to restore the metal from human damages for the last few years. And there is, I believe, a $280 fine if you're caught. The best place to park is here at Yosemite Falls Day Parking across from Camp 4. This is my favorite spot because you're close to the restroom, Yosemite Falls, Swinging Bridge, and the Visitor Center. We just parked our van here in the morning, use it as a base camp, and walked around the whole area before headed to the firefall in the afternoon. Glad we came back. <laughs> From this parking all the way to El Cap crossover, one of the lane is blocked off completely with cones for pedestrians, so it's very safe to walk on. And the road is nearly flat. My 79 year old father walked it with no problems. If this parking is full, you can also park at the main visitor center parking just a short distance away. This is a huge parking lot with bathrooms and it's close to grocery stores and visitor center. If this is full, you can also park further away in Curry Village. I should point out that all three parkings have shuttle bus stops. So if you don't feel like walking, you can always hop on the free shuttle bus. If you have mobility issues, don't worry. The few open parking spots near El Cap picnic area are all temporarily turned into handicap only parkings during this time. There are some roadside parkings here uh, near the El Cap crossover, but the parkings here are limited in numbers and no shuttle bus runs here. And in my opinion, it's kind of dangerous because you're parked right next to two lanes of fast moving traffic with uh, no real walking path. Not to mention when firefall is over and everybody's trying to speed out of the park, good luck trying to get out of this parking spot, get into the traffic, merge into traffic. The closest spot to see firefall is the El Cap picnic area right here. But from here to here, this whole stretch, as long as there's a gap in the trees and you can see horse tail fall, you can see firefall. I think I was somewhere around here, partly because I was lazy and didn't want to walk that far, partly because I just wanted a side view of the fall. I think the waterfall shows up better when it's more side lit. I picked a spot that was more open because I wanted to get a shot of El Cap as well, but 
If you just want the waterfall, you only need a tiny gap in the trees and telephoto lens to shoot the waterfall. Before I went, I was also worried that someone might stand right in front of my camera and block me, but the waterfall is actually really high up. So everyone is pointing up and nobody's gonna get into your shot unless they're right in front of you. Still be courteous and ask before you walk in front of someone else's camera. Now in the past, you could also hike up the first one and a half mile or four mile trail to see the firefall, but that is no longer possible. In fact, there is a $5,000 fine if you're caught. So unfortunately, the area I mentioned earlier is the only viewing area in the valley. Ah, but how did I see firefall twice from two vantage points? Well, you may have seen the news, California got a ton of snow this year. So I planned a winter snowshoe backpacking trip to Glacier Point way back in December. I planned the trip for February 18th to 20th because it's a holiday long weekend here in the US. And what I didn't realize at the time is that it was also peak firefall watching weekend. So I got a bonus show from Taft Point high above the valley. But I'll be honest, it's not the best vantage point to take photos of the firefall. It's much higher and you're way too far away from the waterfall. Even using a telephoto lens, the angle is just too high and too straight on. It's much better to shoot it from the valley floor. So I wouldn't call this an alternative viewing spot to the valley floor or, or even the four mile trail. Not to mention you have to have snowshoes or skis and winter camping experience because you will need to spend the night at Taft Point. When we were there, the temperature got down to the teens at night. But even though it's not the best place to photograph firefall, it is still a spectacular place to see El Cap and Yosemite Valley. So if you know what you're doing and just want to see a show, this could be a good place to go. So what would I do if I decide to go see firefall again? Well, first I would go slightly off peak. Firefall tends to peak in late February, and if everything goes right, it'll last about 10 minutes. But I went a week before peak this year, and I still saw it for a good long 7 to 8 minutes. Plus, don't forget how much or how long you see Firefall has to do with the weather. The first time I saw Firefall this year was a crystal clear day, and the result was stunning. The second time I saw it, it was supposed to be peak day, but the sky was cloudy and very hazy. Even though the sunset was amazing and this red sky lasted for more than half an hour, the wall and the waterfall only turned a dull red. It never turned to that bright yellow orange color. Two, I would also want to go on a reservation day. My first firefall viewing was on a Sunday that required reservation. And as you can see, even though it was crowded, there was still a ton of space to stretch out. Although the second time I backpacked to Taft Point and watched from above, I did come down into the valley the next day to grab some food. This was on a Monday without reservation, and it was chaos. People were all over the place, and this was the traffic jam we had to deal with going in. It took us 20 minutes to drive less than one mile, and we ended up turning around without getting our burgers. And what you see right now was a line of traffic behind us that we saw on the way driving out. Now, I do have to point out that this crowd might be a special case due to a loophole. This was a long weekend and Monday was a public holiday. But for some reason, Yosemite didn't require reservation for this day. On top of that, there was a rockfall on Northside Drive that closed the road turning Southside Drive into a two-lane road. And on top of that, this was during peak firefall, so all of that may have contributed to the chaos. Still, I would try to go on a day with a reservation so I know the visitor count is capped. Three, speaking of reservation, I would get my reservation early. When the reservation first opened in January this year, you could snag a permit fairly easily. The most popular days toward the end of the month were gone after a few hours, but the lesser popular ones were still available for quite a few days. If you waited until two days before the entry day to reserve the permit like I did, only 491 permits were open and everyone was fighting for it. I logged in at exactly 8 o'clock and when I did it, I kept getting a message, error message that says too many people are accessing the system, please try again. So I kept hitting the retry button over and over and every time I can just see that availability number of permits dropping. 
400, 300, 200, until it was down to 40 and I was totally losing hope. But it finally went through and the clock just turned 801 when I got my permit. So yeah, get your reservation early to avoid the stress. Four, since I mentioned stress, let's talk about that. I think this event will be much more pleasant if you go in with a different mindset. I dreaded going in the past because I didn't want to deal with the stress. If you've seen my wilderness backpacking videos, you know that I've done hikes where I ran into a handful of people over several days. The thought of fighting with people for the best spot, the pressure of uh, taking the photo while the firefall lasted, it would just stress me out. But then right before this trip, I thought, why not just treat this like I'm going to a Broadway show? If I get some nice shot out of this, that's great. If I don't, who cares? With that mentality, it, I just felt so much more relaxed and had so much more fun. It was like a huge tailgate party. And that brings me to my next tip. Enjoy the show, but don't get lost in your photos. I know this event is a big deal for photographers and you see lots of people with cameras, big and small, those big long lenses. When Firefall started, it was a frenzy of shutter clicking sounds around me. But don't forget to stop once in a while and look up with your own eyes. If you watch the entire Firefall through your viewfinder, then it's not much different than watching it on YouTube or looking at the pictures on a computer screen. Six, if it's really important for you to see Firefall, go multiple days to increase your chances. If you have reservation, that permit is good for seven days. The first time we went was on a Saturday. It was raining intermittently and pretty cloudy, so we didn't even bother walking to the viewing area. But this is Yosemite we're talking about, so there were plenty of things to do. And honestly, as you can see here, cloudy day in Yosemite Valley can sometimes be even more stunning than a sunny day. Then comes Sunday, all that rain just disappeared and it was crystal clear blue sky day. And of course, we saw, saw Firefall that day. So although I can say I was incredibly lucky that I saw Firefall on the very first try, technically it was on a second try that I saw it. Mountain weather changes dramatically day to day. So check the weather, go for multiple days and you'll increase your chances. Finally, go early and be prepared. We headed over to the viewing area around 1 p.m. I know this is way early, but remember my dad is 79, so we wanted to take our sweet time. You can probably go a little later, like maybe around 2, 2.30ish, but still give yourself some extra time so you can walk back and forth to find a spot that you like. We also brought camp chairs, flashlights, snacks, and drinks. The park was pretty good about toilets and there were several porta potty stations along the parking roadside parking areas. Bundle up because during the day under the sun, I was warm enough to wear a t-shirt. But as soon as the sun goes down, it got cold fast. And don't forget, even though sunset is around 5.30 this time of the year, you're in a valley so the cliffs around will block the sun much sooner. I also saw people dragging little carts with full photo picnic tables, propane stoves, and I was really jealous. Uh, like I said, it was fun and reminded me of a tailgate party. I also saw people riding their bikes, and I thought that was brilliant. But those are extras. Just make sure you bring the basics. Something insulating to sit on because you can lose a lot of body heat sitting on the ground. Uh, warm clothes, flashlights, because you will be walking back in the dark. And of course, a tripod, because you'll need it for those low light, long exposure shots. Don't forget the afterglow. Right after sunset, there was an exodus of people, but if you have a tripod and know how to take nighttime photography, stay for at least another 15 minutes. After the sun has already set, the waterfall started glowing in the dark. You can see this with your naked eyes, but it's very faint. And you can't see it right after sunset because the sky was still very bright. But after 10-15 minutes, when everything else turned dark, that's when you start to see the glow. And if you use long exposure, then you can capture this glowing waterfall on a completely dark background. And that, I think, is a pretty cool shot too. Finally, be patient when you drive out. 
there's going to be a line of cars and it'll feel a little bit like leaving a concert. It'll take you at least an hour to drive out of the park, if not two. So just be patient and drive carefully. Animals come out at dusk and the road might be icy and slippery. And of course, there are people walking back to their cars. So I know it might be tempting to pass other cars because you want to go home, but there are so many cars leaving. If you just pass, pass one slow car, there'll be another in front of it. There's no end to it. So just relax and drive safely. So that was my guide and my tips for watching Firefall. I hope this info is useful if you plan to go see Firefall next year. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more contents like this, please consider subscribing. As I mentioned earlier, I did a snowshoe backpacking trip to Glacier Point last weekend and it was spectacular. So I'll probably work on that video next. Until then, have a great week and I will see you in the next video.